What happens when you take vertical straight line quilting and you just keep stitching and stitching? You end up with this fun design, matchstick quilting. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do this. Matchstick lines are a variation of straight vertical lines that involve stitching a lot of lines really close together. That's one of the designs you can learn about in my book, Simple Quilting, and I'll tell you more about that at the end. But there are some interesting things to consider with matchstick lines that make it a little bit different from just regular straight vertical lines. So this quilt, which is a bright variation of my Pajagi Inspirations quilt, is quilted with matchstick quilting. And you can see that the lines are very close together. And the one interesting thing with this technique is that the more lines you have really close together, the less you see the lines. They kind of fade into the background because there's so much stitching on it. In this quilt, the lines are actually stitched in a kind of brownish color, like the same color as the background, which you would think would really stand out in the bright colors, but it doesn't really stand out. The first thing to keep in mind when you want to stitch a large quilt with matchstick lines is it is going to take a lot of time. It is a lot of stitching involved. And so if you have a quilt that has to be done in a hurry, you might want to try a different design. The second thing is that it does take a lot of thread and it seems obvious when I say it, but a lot of times people don't take that into account when they start a project. And so especially if you've chosen a more expensive quilting thread, then that can really add to the cost of your project. And then the third thing to think about is it does change the texture of the quilt. It will make it quite heavy and quite thin. So if you want a fluffy, squishy quilt, this probably isn't the best option. But this is um, a great option. It does give it really nice texture to it, um, as well as adding the other the color and the quilting lines. So the sample I'm gonna be doing today is this little um, easy checked placemat. I'm gonna do matchstick lines in this direction, in the long direction. And so you'll be able to get an idea of how this will look on a big quilt. If you wanna make your own practice placemat like that, you can check on the link. This is a great project for practicing because there are some seams and you can see how the quilting designs are gonna work on a finished piece without committing to a whole big quilt. So to mark the lines, I'm gonna use my quilting ruler and a hair marker. And a hair marker is great for marking quilt tops because it just leaves a little crease on the fabric and it doesn't add anything like a marker or chalk that might not come out. But if you're gonna mark with a hair marker, be sure to mark it after it's been basted together with the batting and the backing. Don't mark just the quilt top before it's been basted because it might leave marks on your table surface. So when we're marking lines on the quilt top, we don't need to mark every single stitching line that we're gonna have. But we're gonna start by mar marking lines at every inch. So these squares are three inches wide. So we're gonna mark the um, lines every inch and we don't need to mark the seam lines because we can use the seam as our guide. So we line up a ruler one inch away from the seam line and then we mark by pushing the hair marker in a back and forth motion along the quilt. There you can see there's a clear crease line that we can use as a reference line for stitching. So I'm going to go on and mark the rest of the lines. So here we have our piece and we have all the one inch lines marked. So we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch all the lines, the mark lines and the seam lines right at one inch intervals. Now, if you had a very large quilt, you would want to start in the middle and then work out one side, and then go back and work from the middle out to the other side so that you didn't have a whole bunch of the quilt 
um, bunched up in the throat of the sewing machine. But because this is a really small project, we can do all the lines in one direction. Now I do have a walking foot on the sewing machine and this really helps to keep the layers together. So here you can see we have all the one inch lines stitched. So now we're gonna go back in and we're gonna stitch right in between and stitch the half inch lines. We don't have to mark these because the walking foot is about an inch wide. So we can just center it in these strips to find the place. If you have a very narrow walking foot, then you might want to mark the half inch lines. And that's a perfectly good option if you feel more comfortable with that. So we can see that the walking foot is almost an inch wide. So as long as we keep it centered within here, then we're gonna be able to keep our stitches fairly consistent. So here we can see that all the half inch lines have been stitched. And the thing with matchstick lines is, we could stop here and that would be perfectly fine. If at any point you wanna stop, you have that option. The dense stitching that we have with matchstick lines is merely decorative. It is not something that is needed to hold the layers together. So you can feel free to stop at any time, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in quarter inch lines in between. I'm going to use the same method. I'm going to have just the walking foot centered on the lines and follow them along. And you can see that the lines aren't perfectly straight. That's fine it'll still work out. We're just gonna aim for the middle in between the two lines. So here we have the quarter inch line stitched and we can already see this is giving it a great texture. And we could leave it like this as is, but I think I'm gonna go in and add some eighth inch stitching lines. But I'm not gonna add it in the whole piece, I'm just gonna add it in these two columns. And that's the other thing with matchstick quilting is you don't have to be consistent in the entire piece. You can have some pieces that are more densely quilted than others. I'm gonna go ahead and add the eighth inch lines in these two sections. And I'm gonna use the same method. I'm gonna have the walking foot and just have it centered. So I'm just aiming for the middle of the little channels between the stitches. Here we have the two sections stitched with eighth inch spacing. Now you could theoretically go on and stitch another line in between at 16th inch spacing, but I think if you wanna have stitches that heavy, you might wanna just take up weaving. So I've decided that's all the quilting I'm gonna do on this one, uh, that's enough. So now I can just trim the edges and put in a binding and I have a fun finished placemat. So matchstick quilting is perfect for things like table linens or for bags or things that are gonna get a lot of wear and tear and that the heavy stitching is helpful because it adds so much stability to the finished piece. So matchstick quilting is one of the quilting designs that is in this book, Simple Quilting, that has 10 designs that will help you to finish your quilts quickly and easily. You can get more information about this book in the link below. And for more uh, tips, tricks, and tutorials, check out ebitastudio.com.